making sticky forms. We have started the Apache server. That's the first thing. And then in Eclipse, let's start it, create a new project. That's exactly what you do right when you practice. So we start a project, let's name it uh, lecture five to this fall 2022. Okay. And let's name it uh, PHP basics three. Um, okay, then I finish. Okay, let me go to that folder. So what I do is I already have the example files. It's the same example files that I post on Blackboard. So from chapter three, let's copy all of this. And inside uh, Zam, uh, and inside HT Docs, right? This is my work workspace. So once you actually open Eclipse, it asks for your workspace. And once you create a project, actually a folder gets created inside this workspace. So my workspace was set to HT Docs, and inside that you see already a folder has been created because I created a PHP projects project. So I paste everything here, okay? Now here, if I go inside here, I should do a refresh. Yeah, now everything is appearing here, right? So now we can actually uh, use these examples and run them. Okay, so if we go to, this is inside the script 0305. And calculator.php, right? Uh, now you see it cannot include some of the files. Uh, the reason is, okay, we, we can see warning signs, right? So last day we said that if we use include, then we'll see warning. But if we use like require, in that case, it will show error and this program will crash, right? So, so depending on whether we want the program to crash or we just want to show warning, will we use either include or require? So we had used include. The problem is it cannot find this file. The reason is we are, this file is inside this folder, right? It's script 0305. So when we say include, include slash header.html. So it looks for a include folder here, right? Here in the same level. Inside this folder, it looks for an include folder, but there is no include folder here, right? So the includes folder is actually one up, one step above. That means we have to first go to the my current parent. So it goes to the parent, which is the parent is here, and then it finds include. Yeah. Similarly, we did this thing here. Okay. Now we save this file. And we run it again. And now, now it's fine. Okay, now distance, let's put some value here, three and then calculate. Okay, so we actually showed this example in the previous class, if you remember. Uh, now notice one thing that once we actually uh, uh, clicked on submit, what happened is some data was posted to the server, right? And then it checked whether that this form calculator.php is submitted or not. If it's submitted, then these lines were added, but the form data, like form fields were still being displayed, right? The only thing is you see that none of these fields in the form are now set. So they, are, they have been reset to like, they have been emptied. But what happens is in many of the cases, what we want is uh, we want these 
fields to be like not to be reset so we want some values to appear here the reason is suppose uh, one example is uh, if you are suppose applying for something uh, applying for a credit card or any other thing you have filled up a lot of things and then you cl click on submit right but suppose there was a required field which you had mistakenly have haven't put any value there so it happens to you right so creating filling up a form and then clicking on submit but it doesn't go through because you are missing a required field or something right but just think how annoying is this if all your filled up values are gone just because you missed one field right so that never happens so what you want is suppose there are like 10 fields you have filled up nine of them you missed one of them but and then you click submit but once the submit fails you probably don't want all 10 to be emptied right you want all them to all of them to stay and just give you some indication that this field is missing or something so that is what the sticky form means that means the values are still sticking there okay so if you want how to do that using php okay so let us uh, see one example which actually show will show you a sticky form so this is in here script 0306 okay let us fix this one and this one that finds the file in appropriate folder and then let's run that php script okay now you see it's similar we do put the same values to calculate now you see the difference the difference is i clicked on calculate this is a submit button right so it does the same thing everything the only difference is the values are not gone they are still there so two three terrible everything is still there okay so that means now this is a sticky form the values are still sticking there so how do we do this okay so this is how we do this uh, let us go inside uh so if i go to the previous example uh so here you see in the form we had here in the form we first we had a text box right which is of type number so this was the text text box and then we had uh these three radio buttons okay and then we had we had a drop down you see the drop down here right so we had a drop down with four options and finally we had a submit button okay so these four in uh, form control elements we had in the in the uh, in our uh, script so if we look at the new one which is which is sticky see the difference here between this one and this one so now you see that this is sticky so how we actually we make a sticky form is we use the value attribute so look at this one so for each of these form control elements we use this attribute value so you see we use the value attribute for this uh, text box which is of type number right and then we also use this value attribute uh, for these radio buttons okay so we use this one uh, the way we use this one is for the value attribute what we do is we add a php block you see do you see it here 
So we, as a value, we have added a PHP block. Okay. Here also, as a value, we have added a PHP block. Is it clear? Okay, so what do we do in, in that PHP block? That's the important thing. And the important thing is, uh, okay, so the important thing is, uh, you know once a form is submitted, right? Once a form is submitted, what happens is these values, like these super global arrays, they get set, right? Because the uh, form submission method was what? It was post, right? So once you submit something, what happens is this thing, dollar uh, underscore post, this one gets set, right? So initially when the form wasn't submitted, so if I go here, so initially when it wasn't submitted, right? So this text field has a name, had a name, these radio buttons had a name, these drop down had a name, this submit button also had a name, right? So the text box had this name, distance, radio buttons has this name, gallon price, uh, and then the drop downs had some name. So, but the problem, not the problem, the thing was dollar underscore post distance didn't have any value. It wasn't set yet because that submit button wasn't clicked. So once you click the submit button, then this one becomes true, right? Dollar and underscore post distance. This one becomes true. And what value does it have? Whatever value you have put here, right? So if I put two here and then click submit, what happens is dollar underscore post distance becomes two, right? And this is set now. Then you click on this one, dollar underscore post, uh, gallon price, that one now also becomes set. So that's exactly what we are doing here. You see, we use the value attribute, right? Inside that value attribute, we add this PHP block. And what PHP does is it first checks if these variable dollar underscore post and the name of the field is distance right if this is set then what it does it simply prints that value do you see that it simply prints that value so because that one is set now so if i click here what will happen is dollar underscore post distance is going to be set and the value is going to be two so when the form will actually uh, displayed again, it will first check if this value is set. If this value is set, it will just print that value. So two will be displayed here, okay? Similarly, for the radio buttons, it's checking. You see then, uh, you, see, you see that the name of the radio buttons are gallon price, right? So it's checking if, is set if this dollar underscore post gallon price is set, right? Then, not only that, if this is set and the value of it is three, then it's printing three. Then um, actually it won't print, right? So see the difference there. For a text box, you will print this, but for, okay, let's see this. Okay, so for a text box, you're printing a value, but for a radio button or for a drop down, you are not printing anything. Basically, you are selecting, keeping something selected, right? So, exactly that's what it's doing. So, it's the way to keep something selected is or checked for radio button is, is checked and for drop down is selected, right? So what you do is echo, then inside the single invert, what you, or single quote, quotation, you put checked equals to, 
checked okay so now here is the thing just follow this one you see two conditions are checked here right first if gallon price is set and the value of gallon price is three or not the reason is all these radio buttons are in the same group right so they have the same name so if you select one of them in all cases this is going to be set right but the, how do you distinguish between them so you check the value if the value is three then you keep the that radio button as checked and in the, those cases these are going to be false right so these two are no longer going to be checked right okay Similarly, for this drop down, you see the name of the drop down is efficiency, right? So if if any one of them is selected, then this portion is going to be true, right? And then it checks if the value is 10. In that case, you keep this one terrible as selected. If you change the value to suppose 20 or something, then it's going to keep this one, the second one is selected. Okay, so simply saying that for radio button, you have to decide which one is checked, right? So because of that, you use this echo checked equals to checked. For drop down, you need to stick to that one which is already selected. So we keep use echo selected equals to selected okay uh, and for text box you have to just show that value that was put in the text box already so what you do is you first check if that variable is set in that case you just print the value of that variable uh, so let's go and make a little bit change here let's change it to suppose very good Okay, and then we'll click on submit. So what's going to happen? Now what's going to happen is, you see this one, once I click on submit, post method is going to be executed again, right? So this one will still have a value. How, what will be the value for post distance? It's going to be two, right? Because I have put two. Uh, for the gallon price, okay, let me change it to, suppose 3.5 okay so what's going to happen now is once i click on submit this one is going to be true right is set uh this is going to be true right and then the the value is going to be 3.5 so only this portion is going to be true so so the second one is only going to be checked right and for this one, we selected a very good, right? So if we select very good, only these portion, this is going to be true for everything, but the value is going to be 30 because you see the value is set to 30 here, right? So we are selecting the third option. So value is going to be 30. So this is going to be, only these option is going to be selected in the next round. So let's go. Now you see, this thing was changed because we changed the values from here, right? The calculation got changed. Uh, the text box is still retaining or printing the previous value. Uh, the previous selected radio button is still selected. And the previously, uh, uh, previously selected dropdown is still selected. Okay. Okay, so that's what that's how you create sticky forms in PHP. Okay, next, let's talk about functions. So already we have talked about a lot of built-in functions in PHP. Suppose echo is a built-in function, right? And then we had talked about other built-in functions. But you can actually create your own function in PHP. The way to do it, do this is very simple. This is a keyword, function. So inside a PHP block, if you define something like this, suppose 
you start with the keyword function and then you give it a name and then you put these braces not curly braces the normal braces and then you put a curly brace and inside the curly brace you put your function definition that's how you create a function in php okay so so let me show you examples of functions so this is a the simplest way of a, creating a function this is the simplest way uh, so the name can contain letters, numbers, underscore, but cannot begin with a number. That's an important thing. You cannot uh, name a function that begins with a number. So if I say one, no, this is not allowed. And also the function names are case insensitive. So if someone calls, suppose, uh, do nothing, it should still work. If you call the function like this, it's going to be execute this. Okay. Um, okay. So, so uh, you have to use the function, this keyword, followed by the function name, followed by the parentheses, followed by curly braces. Okay. So, as you know, what is the utility of the functions? First of all, uh, if you have to do the same thing again and again, instead of writing the same code again and again, you can just define a function, put the code in the function, and whenever you need this, you just call the function, right? That's the most important use of the function. Also, it separates out the sensitive and complicated process from other code. As you know, like if you just keep on writing this, writing the, things in your code, it, the, your code is going to be, might be very lengthy and look very complicated. And instead you define some function, do all your things there, and then just keep on calling that function. Make the code like slick and also avoid complexity. Uh, and it makes the usage of common code easier to reuse, right? Uh, so, okay. so the function in php they can take arguments this is how you define a function with arguments so you first uh, name the function uh, define the function and inside you mention the arguments right so this function for in particular it takes uh, two arguments the first one it says uh, like first and then last Okay, um, so this is how you, you have defined the function. Now, how do you call this function? You just call the function and you pass the values. So in PHP, you can either call this function like this. So this function actually takes two arguments, right? What is that function? This print hello function takes two arguments, okay. This is print hello. So uh, either you call this like this, uh, you provide values and for all the arguments, or what you can do is you can actually define another variable and then put a value in the variable and then pass that variable as a uh, the value of the argument that's also allowed okay so let me show you one example where a function is being used let's go in here okay so here uh See this one, this is a simple PHP script, right? And inside this, a function is defined, a create add. The name of the function is create add. It doesn't take any argument. The only thing it does, it, it prints something. Basically, it prints a, an HTML element. So what this HTML element is, you create a div class and actually you just create a paragraph. So 
a simple thing is it says this is an annoying ad this is an annoying ad etc etc yeah so this is the create add function so just printing a few lines what this function does is it just creates a few lines creates a paragraph okay so this function is defined and then you see this function is there are two php blocks here so first php block and the second php block okay so you see inside the first php block this function is called call the function and then again in the second php block the function is called again the function can be accessed in both the from the both the blocks the reason behind this is the function actually is inside the same php file right so any any php block inside the same file can actually access this function because this function is defined in this php file in the same php file okay so this create add is being called twice here and here and in between there is some other paragraphs that's fine. Let's fix this. Okay, now for this one, this is fine because this index.php and this includes folder are in the same level, right? You see this? So index.php and includes are in the same level. So this one knows where includes is. Okay, that's fine. So let's try to run this. It's not in any of these folders, so include dot, dot PHP. Sorry, not include index. You see, so this is a this is that paragraph that was created using that function. So that function was called twice at the beginning and then in the end. And you saw that in the middle, we have some HTML elements, some paragraph elements, right? Okay, so we are doing the same thing. Uh, like we are actually creating this annoying ad or whatever, like twice. What we did was we just uh, created a function and then called the function twice. Okay, so this function didn't have any arguments. Let's look at another example that has arguments. So suppose this one. Okay, so for this one, um, let's fix this. Save it. So now very carefully look at this. In the previous example, in the previous example, uh, we were, if the form was already posted or submitted, right? In that case, uh, we were taking value from the distance field and then we were taking value from the radio button. Uh, we were take, sorry, from the drop down and we were taking values from the radio button, right? And then doing a calculation here. And then we were actually posting the results. So this one was get was being posted here, you see, right? Here. Now, what we were doing, we were doing some kind of calculation here, right? So let's see what is changed here. So here, what we do is, um, okay, so we are not actually changing the calculation. Okay, so let me show you. Or let's look at this one, a very simple one. When we were actually adding the radio buttons, right? You see, we were adding the radio button, like we were adding three radio buttons and they actually are similar. The only thing is, only difference is between them is each of them had a different value, right? You see this? And then you were displaying like, 
you are displaying different things based on the values. So can so this is a kind of repetitive thing. So we are repeating this thing again and again. So exactly what this one does is it's uh, defining a function that creates a gallon radio. So this one is for creating a radio button. You see this. So what it does is you see echo input type radio name is gallon price value is you see it takes the argument here so suppose if the value is three it creates a radio button with the value three if the value is four it creates a radio button with value four right not only that now it also checks for the stickiness right so it says if this gallon price po dollar underscore post gallon price is already set and if the value matches this value then it makes it sticky so exactly the same thing that we are doing here we're doing here right that exact same thing is done inside this function right okay now see how this function is being used now this function is called like three times first with the value of three then 3.5 and then four right so effectively what it's doing is it's doing this whole thing so instead we have defined everything in a function and then instead of writing these things three times we just change the argument value right we are passing the argument value three times and then we do the same thing creating a sticky forms is it clear okay yep okay next uh, yeah let's run this actually it's the same thing so even without running this, we can say what's going on. Yeah. So the only thing is now you see these radio buttons are created using using a function. So we call this function three times, and then these radio buttons are getting created. So changing it. Okay. Okay, so next let's look at another example. Sorry. Another example we want to see. Okay. Eclipse. Okay, let's look at this example in three oh three oh nine. Okay, so this one has Are you doing anything here? Okay, just give me a second. Let's see. Yeah, so this one is a little bit different. Just look at the previous one. In the previous one, we had just one argument, right? And then we we're just passing, changing the value here. This one is a little bit different. Uh, the difference here is this one we are adding actually two arguments and you see the second argument has a value you see this so this is called the default argument that means you are already when you are defining the function you are setting a default value for one of the arguments now you use this variable here you see so previously what we were doing is we had put a name here right gallon price or something but now we are actually putting changing this to a variable and making it an argument but we are actually setting a default value gallon price 
okay that's fine and then we are using the value from here here exactly so just the same thing only thing is previously uh this value was hard coded right this was hard coded now we are just making it a variable making it an argument and then assigning a, assigning it a default value right so let me show you one example how default values work so this is default argument value right you would create a function and then you have multiple arguments one of suppose one of the arguments have a def, uh, as a default value now what happens is uh, the name of the function is greet right so you can call this function now in multiple ways uh, so suppose if we call this like this you see this function has like two arguments right but you can just pass one that is still works the reason is this one the second one already has a default value right so if you pass one this function is going to say okay uh he gave me a name zo and i know the second one is hello by default right so it does is echo zo hello okay that's one thing so you can just pass one value and the rest is rest takes the default value or you can replace this value this is how grit sam good evening so now is this one the your compiler sees that okay this function has been called but two values have been provided the, so the first one dollar name is going to be sam and dollar message is going to be good evening so this default value is now overwritten and instead of hello you print good evening sam so this is one advantage of default values so basically you might have some uh, argument value in a function that remains default most of most of the time but sometimes you overwrite it with something else in that case you can create a function that has a default argument value and then if you don't provide it it uses this if you provide it it uses your provided one okay next is returning values so the previous functions that we saw doesn't return any, any value so it does something and that's it but you can also in php you can also return value so the way to return value is return dollar sign so you uh you calculate something and then you return the value okay so let me show you uh, the example for that Uh, not this one okay okay so let's look at this one oh, 0309 okay so this one was an example of a default argument let's go to this one calculator.php which is directly under this not in any, any of the subfolders okay so you see uh, here we have that create radio which creates a radio button uh, takes two arguments the second one is a default valued argument uh, that is fine and then we have another function here which is called uh, calculate trip cost okay so this is a new one in the previous cases what what was happening is it was checking if the form has been submitted if the form has been submitted then these values were set right so using these values it was um, doing some calculations right doing some calculations so all the calculations were happening here and then you were printing the calculated values here now we are actually doing all the calculations inside a function so we are defining a function calculate trip cost we are sending all these three like miles uh, mile per gallon and this and then do all the calculations here and then what we are doing is at the end we have a result right so we are returning that result you see this result the total total cost that cost is now 
returned by this function okay so now let's look at this how this works first we are checking if that if this script or this page has been submitted if it's submitted then first i check if all the fields are set right if i have put a value in distance if i have selected the radio button if i have selected something from efficient from the drop down then i go ahead otherwise i i don't right okay um then i calculate the cost how do i do that i call this function you see i call this calculate trip cost this function and inside i pass the values so you see do, uh, dollar underscore post distance a dollar underscore post efficiency uh, and dollar underscore post gallon price so this one comes from the drop down this one comes from the radio button this one comes from the text box i pass all of them they do the calculation and uh, calculates the amount the total cost and returns the cost so now my cost this one has that value and then you see i just use this value to print here you see i, I do the printing here so i have moved all these calculations all these calculations that were being done here to a function and then i'm just calling the function here okay and that function is now being able to return a value so that value is now being set here okay so i hope uh, this is now clear to you the final thing that I'm going to talk to you is the scope, the variable scope. So uh, uh, very simply, if you are familiar with other programming languages, I think already you know what variable scope is. But just to recap, variable scope is the rim in which a variable is available. So if you define a variable, your variable is available in certain places. Uh, so that is called the variable scope. So let me show you one example. Okay, so PHP variable scopes. First of all, the vari variable is, uh, okay. So the variable is available in the same page. Uh, let me show you. So look at this one. Okay, so this is a, suppose, think this is a PHP file which has this block and the name of this is suppose a.inc or something a.php inside that you see a variable is defined a equals dollar a equals to one and then you included another page okay so very carefully notice this so this is you you included a, another another page or another file and this is the definition of b.inc so what is inside b.inc is this so now very carefully look at this since this variable was dollar a this was defined inside a.inc so i i'm calling this file is a.inc so anything defined before the include line is going to be available in the included file Okay, so if you had like inside this echo dollar a, it would recognize this. Okay. Similarly, if I cannot write actually, if suppose there was another variable defined here, dollar b, just think like this, dollar b equals to something and then if you try to print b here so this this is b dot uh, okay let me not use a and b so this is a file this is b file now a file includes b file a file defines a variable dollar a 
which is also will be available in B file. The reason is this variable is defined before B file is included. That's first thing. Suppose B file has another variable defined as X. Now, if I do try to do something here with variable X, it's going to fail because B file hasn't been included yet. So A file doesn't know what X is. But if you do something here with dollar $x, then it's going to recognize it. The reason is already B file is included and everything that B has is now available to A file. So this is called the page level scope of a variable. That's the first thing. That's the page level. So any variable defined in a page is accessible anywhere in the page. That's the first thing. If, if another file is included, then any variable that is defined before the inclusion is available to the included file. And anything defined inside the included file is defined after the inclusion. If it's a bit confusing, uh, please go to your textbook and also watch this portion of the video again. So that's that. Go there goes the page level thing. Now uh, let's look at another one, which is a function local. So which is called the function level. So we talked about the page level, uh, and the fun next comes the function. The function is scope can also be called local. So let's look at one example here. So you see here in this function, in this function, a variable is defined as dollars, okay? Now, if I try to use that variable here, let's see what happens. Suppose here I just want to uh, let's see. I just want to use the dollar variable here. Now you see there is a problem. The problem is, let's look at this. You see here that it says uh, variable dollar is undefined. Here is the reason. If you define a variable inside a function, the scope of that variable is just that function. So anything outside that function cannot recognize that variable. So I tried to use that dollar variable here, right? But it failed. It says the variable dollar is undefined. So this is what is called the local scope. Any variable defined in a function is available only in the function. But cost was fine. The reason was I had defined the cost here, right? Not inside the function. So that was fine. Okay, so this is called the local scope. So if you define a variable that is inside a function, that one is recognized only inside the function. So gallons has a local scope, dollar has a local scope, okay? That brings the concept of global scope. So if you want a, a variable that is defined in a, uh, in a function or, okay? In that case, what you have to do is you have to use this uh, global keyword. So look at this one. A function is defined here. Also look at this uh, for reference. Uh, go to this address. So two variables are defined outside, and then you want to use them inside the function. Very carefully notice this. If these are outside, defined outside, inside the function, they won't be able to recognize them. If you define something inside, outside the function, they cannot recognize them. But the way to make them recognizable is you have to use this keyword, global. So if you use this global keyword, 
now it knows oh okay so this a is or this b is the same that is the a and b of outside then you can do your calculation okay so that's one way or what you can do is you can use this array global array which is called globals dollar globals and then as the parameter you put the name of the variable if you do this like this now it knows okay this a it comes from outside okay or the whatever a is outside is is same as this one so it takes one and then it takes b from here so very simple rule whatever is def whatever variable is defined outside is not available inside locally right or whatever is defined locally out inside is not available outside okay but if you want the function inside to recognize the variables defined outside or if you want the variables that are defined inside are available outside what you have to do is either you have to use this global keyword or you have to use this uh dollar globals array with the value of the name of the variable and now this variable a and b becomes global and it's the scope is everywhere but in the same page okay okay so yeah so that's what exactly like this suppose you have defined a variable here right global dollar bar and then you def, uh, you assign the value of 20 to var now it knows okay this is actually this now if you call this function name uh, this is fine this knows what this is so this and this now becomes the same otherwise it would have been like different right so if you have a dollar var here and dollar var here those two variables are actually different okay uh okay so that's it for today